Hey, hey, morning, everybody. It is Tuesday Weekly Hobby News Time. Stick around. Hello to all my sports card collector, investor, all of my collectibles friends out there. I hope that everyone is having a great day and had a really good Labor Day weekend. For me, it was fairly low key. I just did some stuff around the house. Um, you know, just honestly getting my mind right for football season. That's going to be starting up here soon. Thursday it starts. And what is it, Bucks Cowboys? I'm kind of like, are the Cowboys going to show us something on Thursday night, or is it going to be Tom Brady and the Bucks just kind of rolling through? Man, they look loaded. I'm I'm a New Orleans Saints fan, so it pains me to say it, but they do look pretty loaded. From what I can see, it didn't really look like they lost anyone of consequence in free agency, and you had the draft where they added players, etc. So we'll have to see. I hope that Jameis and, and the Saints can make some make some waves this season, but we'll have to see how it goes. Before I get started, a couple of housekeeping items. Brad and I normally do off-centered on Thursday nights. We might make kind of a permanent shift to a different night, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. We're still trying to figure that out because of football on Thursday nights. That's going to be on for the next, what, four or five months or so. So we might do a move. I know this week we are looking to move to Wednesday, just with football season opening up on Thursday night. We are most likely going to be Wednesday, and I think it's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern. So instead of 9 p.m. Eastern, it'll be 8 p.m. Eastern. Excited about that. Uh, We might have a guest on. We're still trying to figure that part out, but uh, looking forward to seeing Brad here tomorrow night, potentially. And then not this weekend, but next weekend, I'm going to have Flipping Steve uh, down here in North Carolina. We are going to go to the Raleigh show um, here locally in North Carolina. Looking forward to doing that with him. I don't know if we're going to do some, we'll probably do some vloggy type stuff. We're, we're still trying to figure that out. I'm looking forward to seeing him. We're going to go to the card show and then we're going to go to Charlotte for the Saints Panthers game to see if the Saints can shut down CMC and the gang, uh, pull out a victory there. So looking forward to that weekend, next weekend. All right, guys, sports Collectors Daily has some great articles. You can also order products through them, etc. A great site for hobby news. And so I pulled a couple of articles off of their site here to talk about that I thought would be of interest. Uh, the first one being Emmett Smith is selling more of his sports memorabilia. It seems like he has been kind of moving this stuff for a while. I believe if I have this right through the fractional share company Collectible, Emmett had an agreement, has an agreement uh, with them to sell parts of his collection and then return retain some of it. And I'm not sure exactly if that's still the case or not. This looks to be a separate deal where he's doing some other things where he is auctioning off some of his game used memorabilia, including stuff from his finals excuse me, final Cowboys games, uh, which is, I mean, look, if you're a huge Dallas Cowboys fan, I can see how this stuff coming, kind of coming out of a collection, coming out of the woodwork, if you will, um, up for auction is going to be appealing to big time collectors. Emmett Smith is the all time leading rusher. Nobody will most likely ever pass him just because the NFL has changed. Teams are not running as much. It is more of a passing league. And who knows, maybe that shifts down the line. But Emmett Smith's record is is pretty safe, uh, just given the fact that running backs, yes, they are downhill runners, but a lot of them are used in the passing game as well, and it just doesn't look like there's going to be runners in the same way that there was a Jim Brown or a Walter Payton or an Emmett Smith. Uh, so anyway, Emmett Smith stuff is on the block if you're interested, if you're an Emmett Smith collector. There's a lot of his memorabilia out there. On the auction side of things as well, I thought this was cool. Heritage Auctions um, announced they've got some game-used items, I believe that were just donated from the from the ML be from Major League Baseball, and proceeds are going to go to Bid to End Cancer Charity. I thought that was really cool. I don't know if it's 100% of the proceeds or, or what that looks like, uh, but the MLB kind of giving back with uh, cancer, you know, cancer funding, cancer research. It's something that we all think about, have to worry about because it can. it's really random. That's the scary thing about cancer, and so good to see that that is happening kind of in the community. I want to shed light on some of, the, some of those good news stories. There's obviously plenty of bad news stuff, uh, but we want to hear about some of these types of things. So kudos to the MLB. PSA has added game use bats to their pop reports. I thought this was really interesting. And it's for 30 different hitters, including Hank Aaron and Ted Williams. 
And this is something where I'm, I'm definitely a novice on the sports memorabilia side, but I'm learning more and more about it and, and really interested in it, frankly. I think it's cool, the historical element of it. And now if they're, if they're going to kind of broaden, if PSA can broaden out their, their pop reports, and hopefully other companies do this as well. Right here, you've got game use bats, but there's all sorts of different sports memorabilia, signed helmets and, you know, all sorts of different things that, that could eventually be included in these types of pop reports. I think that would make this, you know, this market only more sophisticated needs, you know, as, as we kind of progress on um, this type of stuff, I love it. You know, I love kind of this sort of stuff because it does add legitimacy. Obviously, pop reports are not 100% accurate. There's going to be slight you know, deficiencies in it. Of course, on the sports card side, you have people that have cracked slabs, resubmitted, and all of these kind of resubmissions are added into the pop report. So the, the pop report numbers are probably inflated to some degree uh, based on cracking slabs, resubmitting, new grades, etc. And again, that's another thing where uh, with the Gemma Mint acquisition, PSA is looking to be able to kind of figure out which cards have they already graded, et cetera, to kind of curb some of that, that you know, cracking to resubmit type activity. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, I think this is progress. This is this is news that, that is, is welcomed anytime you can add, you know, these types of things into pop reports. And I can, I can envision over time, this only becomes more sophisticated, more advanced. And I'm looking forward to more of these sorts of advancements in collectibles, uh, with the collectibles being more and more of an alternative investment or an alternative asset. A ball of Elvis's hair just sold. It's probably not what you thought you were going to hear. I didn't even think I was going to be talking about it, but I wanted to bring attention to this because I think it's important because you, know, you see a lot of kind of everything's on the rise. A lot of collectibles have been on the move upward over the last few years. And this is an example of one that's actually moved down. And, and what do I mean by this? Well, a ball of Elvis's hair, it just sounds weird, sells for, just sold for $72,500. And actually in 2002, so we're going back about 20 years, a lock of Elvis's hair sold for $115,000 at auction. So it, d it does go to show that prices can bounce around, move around in this sort of a market. It's not just, you know, rocket ships to the moon, et cetera. Although, you know, we have seen a lot of rocket ships over the last few years, but this just kind of shows that there is some up and downness uh, to all this stuff. I was looking at the new releases here over the last, what, couple of weeks, and one that just kind of popped out to me. And part of it's because I just bought as well a, a Panini Black Devin Booker rookie card that I I thought was a really cool card, Patch Auto. I wanted to bring attention to because Panini Black football cards were just released a few days back. Not an inexpensive product, just like with most things. Um, it's five cards in the box, in a hobby box, and it looks like hobby boxes are on auction right now at about $500, $600. I haven't bought any of this stuff. I don't really buy new product, but I just wanted to bring attention because the cards are actually pretty darn cool. Um, and I'll see if I can throw up a picture. I think I've got uh, a couple of examples of, of like recent pulls from this product, uh, but just kind of a, a nice looking product. I would assume this is more on the higher end, just being that it's five cards in the box total. If you know any more about Panini Black product, I would like to hear about it just from years past. I, like I said, I've got that Booker Rookie, but that is kind of a, that, that's the first Panini Black card that, that I bought. And I thought it was just a really cool card. If you're a collector of, of Panini Black sets, cards, whether it be football, basketball, et cetera, let me know um, just kind of your experience with it um, and just any more information you've got, because I thought it was worthy of sharing. Guys, have an amazing Tuesday. I hope that, you know, this this week ends up being a good week. We got kind of a shorter work week assuming you don't work on the weekends, but like like I said, I hope that everyone is doing well. We've gone through kind of some craziness over the last few years with the pandemic and everything that's going on and I hope that you all are well. And thank you for all of you that have reached out um, and just kind of shared some of those struggles because I think that it's important to to highlight that and just kind of the um, you know, the push through that everyone has shown just kind of the the resiliency uh, that people have shown. Um, and it's, it's awesome to hear. So guys, thank you very much for joining me here. Stay positive, stay healthy, stay awesome. And I will talk to you again later.